Okay, I just wanted to show this. This was a book that I started a few years ago about the connections to the stars and just kind of breaking down everything. And I just thought this was really crazy years ago when I stumbled upon it and realized. So each age on the Earth. So 10,000 BCE Leo, which is the sun, the lion, which lion means light. And then we have, in this time, we have the pyramids, the obsession with gold, um, the Stone Age, um, the lost consciousness. So they worshipped the sun. A lot of this stuff that we have today, almost all of it with religion, this is why it all traces back to the sun. Because the age of Leo, okay, which is fire. So it all traces back to this. These are just the beginning age. Then it went into cancer. And then in this time, they were doing a lot of goddess worship. And it was more um, women were in power. The age of the great mother. Birthing, bearing, nurturing, protecting. A lot of farm animals. The beginning of civilization. Of nomadic people. When they first started to farm. That, yes. And the beginning of astrology. So that's where we see a lot of the goddess worship came in. People started uh, traveling around the world. Farming and trading. Then we moved into Gemini. And this is when Adam came about. Because we know, you know, there were people on the earth. There were huge already people when Adam was made. So, and that's a big study to get into. So, heaven and earth, family, um, twins, dual nature. So, the tree of good and knowledge. The tree of good and evil. The knowledge of good and evil. We've got duality. And all through the Bible we see this duality. Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, this duality and copies like with Enoch. I have a whole section in here about the whole doppelganger of each person. There's a good version and an evil version. That goes really deep. But in this time, they started to become writing, trading. Now they're trading because in the age before, everyone started farming. And moving around and being nomadic from being nomadic to settling down. So here's where we start getting families, writing, multiplicity, you know, Cain and Abel. We've got Cain doing evil, you know, starting to kind of move into this age. Well, then the next age is the age of Noah, which is in Taurus, which of course, the bull. So this is when they started worshipping the golden bull, the bull, golden calf. And so you see how from farming to trading, which, you know, this all, the knowledge and the writing started turning into evil. In the book of Enoch, it says, like, the more knowledge people were getting, they started doing evil when they started writing. And there was jealousy. So then the age of the bull, we have the earth age. Ag ag agriculture, the bull. We've got Moses, the end of Taurus. His followers made a golden calf, killing the uh, bull and ending the age of Taurus, ushering us into Aries. So the ankh is the thoracic vertebra of a bull, the Egyptian symbol of life. So this is where the ankh comes from. Worship of Apis, the bull de deity. The most important of all sacred animals in Egypt. This is 16 BC. So we've got... Uh, I don't know why it says pyramids built here. These, these notes are pretty rough. But if you look at all the stories in the Bible, they coincide with these earth ages. Then they move into the age of Aries with Abraham, fire, um, iron, the battering ram... Siege engine decide to break open the masonry walls of fortifications or splinter wooden gates. Large log carried by people to smash doors. 
Lamb of God expected the three magi knew to look for him, so they were looking for this in the stars. This is how they knew about Jesus. People, like Christians, demonize the stars, but how do you think they all knew what time it was and what was going to happen? They knew by these ages, and they knew by the stars. So, initiative, originality and science, social, ancient and Greece, Roman Empire were called the sons of Mars, sacrifice of Abraham's ram, expanding empires, the age of war, Aries is about war. Metal and iron, they were making swords. They replaced polytheism with monotheism. So they, they were going from multiple gods to one god. So then, so they knew before in that age, they were looking for the age of Pisces and looking for Jesus. So then we've got Pisces, the fish. Spirits, end of life, okay. Behold, when you are entered into the city, there shall be a man to meet you, bring you a pitcher of water, follow him. He's talking about the age of Aquarius. So we got baptism, water. This whole theme of Pisces is water. The age of monotheism, spirituality, and the fish. Water coincides with spirit. Um, water holds memory. Okay, and also quartz crystals hold memory just like water does. And you can actually put memory in quartz crystals and take it out. Um, oh, I can't think of his name right now. I'll post and share. Miguel Vogel. He made Vogel crystals and he demonstrated how they were using in these times, they could put information in crystal. And now in every one of our TVs and phones, we have quartz crystals. That's how they did radios. So water and quartz crystal holds memory. And our body is mostly made up of water. So water, spirit, and quartz crystal, they all go together. They all work in the same way. That's why he said water and light. So the water in your body actually holds memory. So you got the 12 apostles, they were fishers of men. The sign for Christians was the fish. So this whole era was the fish, the water, the information. And that's funny, like Pisces and Aquarius, uh, they're very spiritual. And we're seeing that since this time, the spirit, it's been more spiritual. Okay, so then after Christ, we come in, into the age of Aquarius. Consciousness, purification of the inner self, truth. And we are seeing that. We're seeing this so-called new age movement. This is not something to be afraid of. This is what Jesus was talking about. They knew this. They knew the themes of the ages and the energy. And globalism. Uh, getting in tune with ourselves. Getting into these spiritual deeper things. Leaving the bull the physical, the evil, we're past all that. We're moving into an age of freedom, technology. And here's just the verse again. Pairing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house. These are the houses. It's all about astrology, where he entereth in. And you shall say unto the good men of the house, the master saith unto thee, Where is thy guest chamber? Where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. Okay, and I put that there when I was used to be looking for Jesus to come, but now I see that it's the Christ within. He's coming. It's an inner purification of people. It's a reconnecting back to the Logos. Okay, then the next stage is the Capricorn. The sea goat, it's earth. Um, the unicorn is a symbol of spiritual purity. Someone become enlightened and has access to the third eye. Capricorn is said to be the most mystical and complicated sign. From the age of Capricorn, there will no longer be an opportunity for humans to pass from the lower to the higher states, the gates of cosmic consciousness. So Cancer, Mother, Capricorn, Father. The lower aquatic reptile side of Capricorn is in water, while the upper is above, so spirit, body. The Sanskrit word or name of Capricorn is Makara which is crocodile. The lower part symbolizes the astral world. 
The lower part has a predatory type nature, like the crocodile, and only responds to the reptile brain and human desires. Saturnalia, the month of Capricorn, devil, goat. The upper part of the creature is actually a unicorn, a goat with a single horn.